everyone. Welcome to Plants and Politics. This is part two of my coverage of Trump's first day of his impeachment trial. So I left off with his first attorney finishing up, bunch of nothingness. His second attorney steps up to the plate. He was far more aggressive until he broke down crying at the end of his portion because he was reading a speech about a sailor and lighthouses and distant shores. I mean, it, it all had another meaning, but yeah, how that caused him to break down, but yet, you know, the death of five people, actual people at the Capitol is totally cool with him, but whatever. But before that, he continued with the threats of future impeachment for, quote, not liking a future president. Because, yeah, that's what this is all about. It's just a matter of, you know, people don't like Trump. So this guy then goes on to argue that if Trump committed a crime, then he should just be tried. He should just be charged and tried in a court of law because he's out of office now. There's no reason to impeach him and try to remove him from office because he's already out of office. And so this is a moot point. This is ridiculous. He should just be treated like every other private citizen. What they fail to address is the fact that something can be legal and yet still be a violation of your oath of office. And how do we know that to be true? Because Republicans impeached Bill Clinton for having an affair and receiving oral sex. Last I checked, having an affair wasn't a crime, nor was consensual sex between two adults. Yet they still felt that what he did was so egregious that it warranted impeachment and potential removal from office. Now, to be clear, I agreed with them. Even as a far lefty, I agreed with them. I thought Clinton showed a lack of morals and ethics and sorry, but those things do and should matter, especially in the leader of the country, which is why I also believe that Trump should have been removed on day one because character matters. If it doesn't matter in the President of the United States, then tell me when and for whom does it matter? Then they complained and they lied about Nancy Pelosi holding on to the article of impeachment until Trump was out of office. So they said, because she did that, it deprived Trump of due process and a chance to address the charges against him. First of all, if Trump wanted to address the charges against him, he could come to the Senate. He was asked to come and testify in this Senate trial, and he refused because he is chicken shit. Second, the timing of this trial was Mitch McConnell's call because he was still the Senate majority leader when Trump was impeached in the House. So it was 100% up to Mitch McConnell to decide when this trial would take place. He was the one that said that it could not take place before Biden's inauguration. But for McConnell dragging this process out and refusing to hold the Senate trial until after Trump was out of office, he would have still been president when this trial took place. They did the impeachment almost immediately after Mike Pence made it clear that he was not going to enact the 25th Amendment. And then after McConnell drags this out, waits until Trump is out of office for the Senate to be allowed to take it up, what did McConnell do today? He voted against this. He voted that this impeachment was unconstitutional. This trial was unconstitutional because Trump was already out of office. This is quintessential Republican bullshit. They create a problem, then they complain that that problem exists, and then they say, oh, well, we can't possibly do our constitutional duty and uphold our oath of office because of this problem, the problem that they created. So the second attorney went on to say that the impeachment was meant to disenfranchise over 70 million voters who may want to vote for Trump again in the future.
So by this logic, every attorney in the entire country could argue, well, if you convict John or Jane Doe, if you convict my client, you could be disenfranchising millions of voters because she or he may decide to run for president someday. <laughs> Seriously? Shut up. <laughs> You're embarrassing yourself. And what about the more than 81 million voters who voted for Biden, who Republicans tried to disenfranchise by voting to block Biden's electoral college votes that day? So when they do it, they're being patriotic. When they do it, they have reasons for it. When Democrats do something that's not even anywhere near as bad or in the realm of being nefarious, it's divisive. Then he talked about sending a message about a lack of due process. Yet they have no concerns, no qualms about the message that will be sent by failing to impeach and impose some sort of penalty for the next despot that comes along, the next authoritarian that comes along, the next fascist that tries to take over our country and tries to use force and literally builds a, an army to try to overturn our election results. Let's be crystal clear about what this is all about, why we are even having this discussion and this impeachment trial today. President Donald J. Trump, along with his craven allies, lied for two solid months to convince his supporters that he was robbed of a second term. They did everything in their power daily for two consecutive months to scam millions of people into believing that not only was the election stolen from him, but if the quote, steal was allowed to stand, it would mean the end of America as they know it. They beat it into these people's heads that they would all be rounded up, stripped of their weapons, stripped of their autonomy and their voices and forced to submit to the will of communists. And then you had QAnon out there telling them that they would be at the mercy of baby eating pedophiles. Then Trump encouraged them. He said, come to DC, January 6th, will be wild. That, those were his exact words will be wild. What did he mean by that? If not an insurrection, he didn't do anything that was wild that day. Uh, what a regular rally is wild. Let's, let's even look at the name of the event. He told them, he encouraged them to attend the Save America rally on January 6th. That was the name of his rally right before these people, these terrorists, attack the Capitol, calling to hang Mike Pence, set up gallows with a noose outside, and were yelling and screaming for Pelosi and saying they wanted to put a bullet through her head. Save America. What was that called again? Was it March for Trump? Was it Patriots for Trump? Patriot rally? Once again, even with just the name of the rally, Trump was insinuating that this was it. This was their chance, possibly their only and last chance to literally save America. He then stood on stage and said, you'll never take your country back with weakness. You have to be strong. You have to fight like hell. Then others got up there. Rudy Giuliani got up on stage. He made statements saying, quote, how about trial by combat? Don Jr. and others got up on stage. They yelled out orders to, quote, fight. And they did. These people did. Five people died that day. Some were their fellow patriots who also believed these lies. But for Donald Trump's lies, those people would not have been there. Dozens of others were severely injured, including police officers. One officer may lose the sight in one of his eyes. Another 
suffered a heart attack from being repeatedly tased. At the same time, while he's being tased, he's being beat with a flagpole, with a hockey stick, with other items, he's being kicked. He reports hearing people yelling in the crowd, kill him with his own gun. And he said he thought about his kids and it became a matter of self-preservation. Another officer lost three fingers. Many suffered head and brain trauma. Two officers have since committed suicide and nearly 150 officers have been diagnosed with COVID because of this event, because of this super spreader event. And yet these same senators, these same SOBs who held eight hearings and beat the Benghazi drum for years because four Americans died in an attack on a government building in another country, these same senators don't give a damn about what Trump's domestic terrorists did at our United States Capitol that day and how Trump played a part in every single solitary bit of it. If the roles were reversed, they'd be like vultures. They'd be picking apart the bones of a Democratic president who did this. So let me issue my own warning to Republican lawmakers and anyone else on the right who might be listening. If you refuse to do what's right, if you refuse to hold this president accountable for inciting a deadly attempted coup to overthrow the government, you can never, ever again call out anything that a Democratic president does. Understand that. You've already lost nearly all credibility with everything he's been allowed to get away with for four freaking years. But this will absolutely positively be the final nail in the coffin. No matter what a Democratic president does from here on out, people on the left are going to just shrug their shoulders and tell you to get over it. I will still care because, as I said, character does and should matter. But I'm going to tell you just flat out, straight up, the majority of people on the left will tell you to shut up and move on just as Republicans are doing to all of us right now. All right, guys, so I will keep on watching. I I hope that they wake up before it's too late, because if this is not impeachable, if this is not something that prevents you and precludes you from holding office again in the future, then there is literally nothing, literally nothing. As Trump said, he could just go shoot someone on Fifth Avenue And these Republican lawmakers, they would find some way to reason it away. It's disgusting. All right, guys, as always, like, share, and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Take care, and I'll talk with you soon.